Like Porth call on steroids, Vegas is all sand, slot machines and chips with everything. And Elvis is pretty big here too. But the chips in Vegas this week ain't no fries, but are of the computer variety. They come from around the globe to visit this surreal world. A world where Paris is just a few steps from New York and Venice rubs shoulders with the pyramids. It's a virtual reality if you like, but more of that later. CES Consumer Electronics Show is based at the Las Vegas Convention Center and has become an annual pilgrimage for followers of the goddess of technology. So here we are, 184,000 people from 53 countries across the globe gathered for the largest show of its type anywhere on Earth. And you need to wear sunglasses, not because of the desert conditions, but because the array of tech is simply dazzling. Top of the agenda this year, AR, VR and AI. For those who speak English, that's augmented reality, virtual reality and artificial intelligence. More and more consumer products will now have these features built in. There's a grill over there. That's a grill. <laughs> hey, what up, dude? VR has been around a while now, but has struggled to appeal to the mainstream because of the bulky headsets. It's very much a recreational tool that can simulate snowboarding or a fairground ride. But could there be a use for immersive 360 degree content in news and factual programming viewed without headsets? That was the subject of one of the many special talks at this week's event. Viewers are sometimes weary, uh, weary of the truth. And um, I think when you add 360 dimensionality to your news programming, it allows viewers to actually step in to the place of where that camera is and look around and, and really see the heart of where the story is and what the story is about. So I think um, while it's amazing and it's great to have 2D content reporting the news, I think it's, it's critical and it's important to have that. Allowing uh, viewers to actually get a 360 view from a different location or a different angle, I think will take uh, news stories and uh, the content that's being shared to the next level. We're already familiar with 360 degree cameras, but more and more are coming to market. Here's the latest from GoPro, that I'm keen to get on test in the Cardiff Innovation Lounge. This is uh, GoPro Fusion. Uh, this is the software that goes with GoPro Fusion. This was released yesterday on the App Store. This is a full 5.2K running on the phone. So you can see I can manipulate it, I can change the field of view. If I hit play here, I can change the, the perspective in any way. I can zoom in. The quality is so high that I can actually record what I'm seeing in a feature called overcapture. This allows us to hit record, and I'm actually watching him refuel this car. And this is gonna create a new video that's a, like a standard video, a 1080p video that you can share instantly out of your 360 content. Uh, we do full stabilization on the camera. Um, so in software, we take the information that we're recording and we use it to stabilize it. So it, it's almost like having a gimbal without a gimbal. With cars increasingly moving into an electric-powered future, the automotive industry is now one of the biggest exhibitors at CES. Byton could be a brand of the future, a collaboration between former Apple and BMW engineers, but built in China. This beauty, however, is one of our very own. Aston Martin begin production near Barry very soon. I think we should fly the flag and have it as our pool car. But seriously, in the near future of self-driving cars, Broadcasters have a role in tailoring content to this new breed of viewers who can watch as they go. The exhibition floors are awash with camera crews and vloggers from around the world. It's clear mobile journalism has come of age. But the Innovation Lounge is always looking for that new piece of kit that could help your mojo. This is the new Volt. It can be used for either GoPro or also your cell phone as well. Uh, we have these, these came out last year. Complete mobility. They are $79 available at all major retailers. My name is Joshua Schoenbart and I'm Chief Commercial Officer of Pogotech. And here today at, at, at Pepcom at CES, we're unveiling Pogocam. Pogocam is the world's smallest camera attachable to eyewear. It's a five megapixel camera that takes 100 photos and three minutes of 720p HD video with audio. It attaches to eyewear via Pogo Loop on my glasses, a universal adapter that attaches to 95% of all eyewear. So we got our revolver kit, which is a lens attachment and a case. To use it, you just stick it on and flip out the lens 
And we've got, this is our six in one kit. We've got six different lenses to use with your phone. You, to change lenses, you just rotate it, and flip it out. So this is our um, macro, super macro. We also got a wide angle and telephoto. And this is our fisheye and telephoto. There's also this neat range of microphones from Shure, specially designed for radio and news gathering. And this is the MV88. So it's uh, got this free app that's how you control all the configurations. It's got the five DSP modes, 36 dB of adjustable gain. The midside architecture allows you to have adjustable width stereo, selectable polar patterns, and there's also a five band um, EQ, a limiter and a compressor. Uh, the barrel swivels and rotates, which allows you to keep the stereo orientation uh, no matter what your application is. Um, it's great for voiceover as well if you want to put it into the monocardio into it. If you put it in the bi-directional mode like this, it's actually a decent interview mic. You can keep it between a subject uh, and an interviewer. And how about this to make an instant TV studio for anyone with a laptop and a Wi-Fi signal? It's just $300. Cheap enough to put in a patch reporter's home and so much better than Skype. Ultimately, this is a one cable solution. It's a USB-C to your computer. Uh, it's class compliant, so it's plug and play. Three major components of this, we got a camera, we got a light ring, and we have a microphone. First I'll talk about the camera. The camera is basically uh, based upon uh, the specs of the Logitech C920, basically industry standard webcam. Uh, two main features of it are the uh, autofocus. It's really fast, really strong, uh, really good autofocus, as well as H.264 compression built into uh, the camera itself. It does a lot of the work outside of the computer. It's good for live streaming. Uh, second major feature, obviously, is the light ring. And uh, you have a control over here so you can adjust the intensity of the light ring. You can also switch this filter off. This is a diffuser, but we also have warm and cool filters as well. Uh, and you can power on and off the camera, you can power on and off the microphone, and like I said right here, you can adjust the intensity of the light ring. The microphone itself is actually a condenser microphone, uh, and it's a cardioid pattern, um, and it's, it's high quality, sounds great. And here at the CES show, we're showing our 170 and 200 cameras, and what you are interested in is we have a version of the 200 called the 200 SP, which is for sports production. And what that allows you to do is using a Wi-Fi dongle like you see here, you can connect um, with a tablet or a laptop or anything with a uh, web interface. And you can update a score using the camera and you don't need a separate um, device to do that. JVC also has a new product for streaming this live video. This one is video. the JVC Pro HD Bridge, otherwise known as the PB Cell 200. And um, traditionally, if you're not using a microwave truck, if you want to stream video, you might have a backpack type device for each camera with cellular modems in it. That can be quite pricey because each camera needs multiple modems. And what this device does is it is a, a bridge that will allow multiple cameras to stream using cellular modems in it. So you only have to pay for a couple modems in the bridge and yet using uh, like a Wi-Fi dongle on your camera as we showed on the GYHM 200 SP, that camera can talk to this device and this device will allow it to go back to a decoder or a switcher or wherever you're sending the stream. Well, it's been an extremely busy first day going to all the different convention centers right across Vegas, looking at all the tech. And even though I've caught a bus between many venues, I've still walked, according to my watch, over 22 and a half thousand steps. Now, hopefully that will help me burn off some of the excess calories from all the free food and drink. Cheers. Day two back at the convention center and the nearby Mirage and Venetian hotels. Here they're holding what they call super sessions, where industry experts debate the tech topics of the day. I've heard about the future of news, how 5G will revolutionize our lives, connecting the Internet of Things, and how AI will become more and more accessible. One AI product that caught my eye was this neat translator, very useful for crews traveling abroad. I'm Jeff Wade, I'm Director of Sales and Marketing for Sourcenext, and we're launching Pocket Talk, uh, which is an AI-powered, portable uh, translation device, supports 63 different languages, works on Wi-Fi and SIM, and basically you just uh, power it on, uh, you choose which languages you want to do, simply press a button, how far to the nearest train station? Oh, 
So it'll do the audio as well as write it out in the, the other language. So it basically allows people to confidently travel the world, whether it be for personal or business use. Drones continue to command column inches in tech publications. This very cheap Chinese one is just $60 and can shoot in 4K, particularly good indoors, I'm told. For those confined to the office, keeping your mobile or tablet fully charged all day as you move from meeting to meeting could be a problem. Now there's a system which charges with light. Might be a nice addition to some of the meeting rooms in New BH. This could also be innovative in Central Square. Standing desks are so 2017. Now we have cycling desks. Charge your phone as you spin. Grabbing the headlines at the show, bigger and better TVs. Will 8K become the new normal? We've also seen foldable screens that are paper thin and other TV screens that are speakers. As the consumer hardware improves, the viewer is likely to become critical if content doesn't keep pace. Well, this is just a snapshot of the many things that I've seen here in Vegas, and some of them I hope to bring to the Innovation Lounge very soon. Maybe not the Aston Martin, though. But for now, Elvis is leaving the convention center. Thank you very much. Viva!